In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Think about it. When you throw a party, when you work hard to make sure that the house is spotless, when you blow the grocery budget in order to provide your guests with the best hors d'oeuvres, fall off the bone ribs, and drinks to complement it all, you want people to come. They knew you were planning a blowout party. They knew you wanted them to come. You gave them the date ahead of time. They excitedly said, sure, we'll be there. Wouldn't miss it for the world. And then, when the time comes, and you anxiously wait at home, excited to celebrate with your friends, no one shows up. The food is getting cold. You start making phone calls, texting everyone who promised to make it, and all of them come up with some excuse why they have to back out. You tell them you understand, and it's no big deal, but it is. You're hurt. You're angry. If you had known that they weren't coming that no one really wanted to celebrate with you, you wouldn't have gone to all the expense and trouble. You didn't ask anything from them in return. You didn't expect them to bring a dish to share. They rejected your graciousness. They rejected you. Now notice what this parable is all about. It's less about the feast and more about the king and how things work in the kingdom of heaven. And that's extremely important. This isn't about the kingdom of the world. This is about what is going on here in the church. This parable of warning is not directed to the unbeliever, but to us to everyone who bears the name of Christ. But insofar as it is a warning, it is also a fresh reminder of the true nature of God's kingdom, a reminder of how any of us become and remain members of that kingdom. In the kingdom of heaven, God the Father does all the work. He alone makes all the preparations for the feast. He toils. He sacrifices. Not begrudgingly, but gladly and joyously. That's the way it must be, and that's the way God wants it to be. Because He loves to bless. He loves to just give away His kingdom and its blessings for nothing. He wants someone to enjoy everything that is his. He wants someone else to benefit from his riches. But what God offers isn't wealth or power. He isn't handing over parcels of land or fabulous vacations. This is a marriage feast. The Son of God is about to take a bride. Now, oftentimes, marriages during those days were viewed in terms of how the bride might benefit the family financially or socially. But again, that isn't how it works in the kingdom of heaven. In the kingdom of heaven, it's the bride who reaps all of the benefits. The Father has chosen a bride for His Son, not for political or financial gain, but because He wants the bride to have the kingdom of His Son. Jesus is about to win for Himself a bride by dying for her, by buying her back from death, cleansing her from every spot and wrinkle of her sin. Jesus has chosen His beloved to whom he will cling, a beloved who will be joined to him. 
and upon whom He will lavish every ounce of His love and His care. Now, those who were first invited to the king's celebration, I'm sure, had planned on coming. They were excited in the beginning. It sounded great. They wanted to be a part of it, but in the end, it's not really what they wanted. They despised the invitation. They were too busy with other things. They were too busy with their own works and their own concerns. They thought they would benefit more if they worked their new oxen, tilled their fields, cared for their business, or took care of their own wife. Now, even here in the world, we recognize how foolish such a refusal would be. If the President of the United States, whoever he is, or the Queen of England invited you to dinner, you're not going to say no. You will move everything in your schedule to be there. Those excuses that at first glance seemed so legitimate suddenly look completely foolish. And how much more foolish when it is God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, who invites you. And more than that, what He invites you to is the banquet of your own salvation, the full and free forgiveness of all your sins, the victory feast of Christ Jesus over your sin and your death. And yet, how often do we refuse? How often do we reject God's mercy for our own self-made good works? How often do we turn our nose up or simply refuse to believe that salvation is a completely free gift that can't be earned, can't be supplemented, can't be improved upon, that we can't ever accomplish it on our own. Repent. There is no work that you could ever do, no amount of business, busyness, moral living, praying, or serving that will benefit you one bit in the kingdom of heaven. In this kingdom, the benefits all come from the same place, And for the same price, they are the gracious working of God the Father through the marriage of His Son, Jesus Christ, to His beloved bride, the Holy Christian Church. And they are yours for nothing. This is a kingdom of pure grace. There is no room for your doing only receiving. In truth, you are invited to be a part of the bride, one of the blessed ones upon whom Christ Jesus lavishes the kingdom of His Father, a kingdom of forgiveness, a kingdom of life, a kingdom of salvation, where Adam once only gave a rib to create Eve. Jesus has poured out of His side blood and water, grounding baptism in the Lord's Supper in His sacrificial death for you. And from these precious sacraments, Christ makes for Himself a holy and spotless bride, a bride that had once been covered in shame and the nakedness of her sin, but no longer. The free grace of God in Christ Jesus has made for Himself a new people, born not of flesh and blood or dead, useless works of the law, but a new people born of water and of the Spirit, the merciful, undeserved work of God. But this kingdom will not be shared with those who still cling to their own righteousness, who take some comfort in their striving. 
If the gracious invitation to the marriage feast of Christ, this banquet of body and blood through which you receive already every blessing of God's kingdom isn't sufficient for you, if your heart still longs to be satisfied with the dead works of the law, if you still will not let go of your own merits and your own input, if you allow the temporary riches of this life to steal your heart from your heavenly bridegroom and the gifts that he has prepared for you by his death, take heed. Listen again to what happened to those first invited. The anger of the king burned against them, and he sent his troops to destroy those murderers and burn their city. They refused the invitation to grace. And so they refused the one who had graciously invited them, and they refused him to their destruction. God's kingdom is a kingdom of pure grace. And that is all. Grace. If we seek an audience with the Father in any other way than through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, then we will be refused. If our hearts are found dressed in the delusions of self-righteousness rather than in the wedding garment of Christ's righteousness, which the King Himself has provided for you, we will be bound hand and feet and cast into eternal damnation. Know what the Father's will is for you. It is for your salvation. God's desire is that you be in His kingdom, taking the place that He has prepared for you by the death of His Son, around his banquet table. His greatest joy is in saving sinners and filling his banquet hall with those who know that they don't deserve to be there, who knows that they have done nothing to deserve the feast of salvation and that they've done everything that ought to get them kicked out, who know that they deserve to be outcasts, but who nonetheless receive the invitation with joy. They go not on the basis of their own worth, but because of the love and mercy and graciousness of the King, and gladly wear the wedding garment of their baptism, which covers all of their own unrighteousness with the perfect righteousness of Jesus. Come, for the wedding feast is ready. All of the preparations have been made for you. The lamb has been slain. Your wedding garment has been given to you, and God the Father has invited you to the banquet of your salvation. In the name of Jesus. Amen.